Hello, welcome. In this video, we are going to be looking at trigonometry with general triangles, and we'll start with our practice using the law of sines, nice basic examples. <coughs> Excuse me. So let's cover that. Um, in this practice set, you'll see basic triangle problems where you're given an angle and two sides, or two angles and one side in such a way that you can use the law of science. So let's just go over what that law tells us. And then really this problem set is about applying the law of signs. So the law of signs tells us that in, um, in any triangle, um, you have the sine of some angle, A, divided by the side length, A, is the same thing as the ratio of the sine of another angle B to its side B and and that's the same thing as the sine of the third angle divided by the length of the same the third side you could also write it with a B and C up top these lowercase letters represent the side lengths and then you could put the signs of their corresponding angles that are across from those sides on the bottom and I'll show you a picture right now what that means. These are the two most common ways of writing the law of sines. So for example, if I have some triangle, doesn't need to be a right triangle, you have some angle, let's say this is our angle A, that means that the side that's across from that, we call that side length A. So that's A, and then this is angle B, its side length would be right here. And then here's angle C, and here's the corresponding side length. So here's side length C, A, B, angles A, B, C, and they're just across from each other. So the sine of this angle divided by the length of this side equals the sine of this angle divided by the length of that side, which equals the sine of this angle divided by the length of that side. Those ratios are all the same either way you write it. So this version, or essentially the reciprocal of each uh, expression in this equation. You often don't need all three sides. So for example, in this one, they say note that the measure of angle C is acute. That'll become more relevant because um, it turns out there are many angles that have equivalent sine and cosines. Um, and so here we want to establish that we're only looking at the acute case of that angle. So here's angle C. We want to find angle C. We have side length that's across from it. So I'm going to say the sine of angle C divided by the side length across from it, which is here, equals the sine of 23, and I guess you can call that angle A or whatever, because it's at point A, over side length A here. Now I chose to write the sines on top, because I like to keep my variable up top, but you could have written it with the sine of C in the denominator, and you would still get the same thing. Now to solve this, I'm just gonna multiply both sides by 10. So the sine of angle C equals 10 times the sine of 23 divided by seven. So the sine of C, let's go through this, is going to be 10 times the sine of angle C is be 10 times the sine of 23 divided by seven. And we're gonna go to mode to make sure we're in degrees here. Okay, we're in degrees. Quit out of that. Hit enter. I get 0.558. Now, I'm gonna, in my notes, I'm just gonna write 0.558, right? But that's an approximation, 558. So I put these squiggly lines here, it's about that. But on the calculator, I'm going to find the exact angle by pressing second sine, so the arc sine or inverse sine of that angle I just had. So I put second answer. So it's just pulling this decimal up here. And it's about 33.9. They want to the nearest degree. That's 34 degrees. So what I, what I just did in the calculator was I did the arc sine or inverse sine of 0 0.558. And that's, a, that, that's 39 degrees to the nearest degree. And that's our answer. It is acute. 
that makes sense and it looks like it it looks about right you know 23 versus 39 39 is across from the longer side that makes a little bit of sense to me and you'll learn later that um there are many angles infinite angles excuse me that have this this sine ratio so we want to establish that it is acute and the next one in this situation we're missing we want to find a side length right just like we did before in the last one no excuse me in the last one we wanted to find an angle now we're finding a side length so for example if I say that this is angle a at point a it makes sense right so the sine of a which is 31 over side a which is this length BC is 5 that would be this equal to the sine of B which is 108 over side length AC which we called we would call little b in our equation right this is little b here now you can solve it like this but you might also rewrite it like this to keep b in the numerator it might make your life a little bit easier to put the variable up top oops if i flip this side i have to also flip this side here right i have to flip both sides take the reciprocal of both sides to maintain equivalence and now in the last case, um, if we go back here, I just solve for c, the sine of c, by multiplying both sides by the denominator by 10. So now I can do the same thing. I can multiply both sides by this denominator, which is the sine of 108. So if I do that, that means b will equal the sine of 108 times 5 divided by the sine of 31. And they want us to round this to the nearest tenth. Okay, so here I'm going to enter that in my calculator. The sine of 108 times 5, enter, and then divide it by the sine of 31. We get 9.23 to the nearest tenth is 9.2. So I'm going to put 9.2 right here. And that makes sense to me that B is about 9.2. It seems longer than this side here, which makes sense because it's across from a larger angle. And it seems reasonable. So I always check that. We want to make sure it seems reasonable. In this last example, we are also finding a side length BC. So I'm going to say the, so the, angle, the sine of this angle A is 93, the sine of 93 over the unknown side little a which is across from that angle has to be equal to the sine of b which is 42 over little b which is 11. now i i should write little a in the denominator here and flip both sides to make everything easier but let's say you're solving it like this what might you do you might cross multiply you might multiply the, 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 the product you might recognize that the, this product and this product must be equivalent so let's solve it that way a times the sine of 42, right, this is true for all proportions, must equal 11 times the sine of 93. And then to solve for A, I divide by the sine of 42. So the, the strategy here is, and I actually often do this, I often put my signs up top no matter what. It just seems easier for me than to then I manipulate the algebra. And it just ends up requiring maybe an extra step in your thinking. So in the last problem, we had put A or the unknown side up top and flip both sides. That, that required only one step to solve. But as you can see here, you might solve it in two steps. So then here, A is going to be solved to the nearest tenth. So we have 11 times the sine of 93. Enter. Divided by the sine of 42. Enter. And we get to the nearest tenth, 16.4. So that's my answer here. Okay, hope that helps.